but we appreciate that wherever there is something that people of South Africa want to raise, they need to write those petitions, and as such, we have to deal with those petitions. Today is the day that in South Africa is uh, seen as the AIDS day. This is one of the pandemics that is affecting um, everyone across racial lines, across um, sex. It affects everyone. And other than declining in terms of numbers, the research will tell you that there has been an increase in the recent years. And where's this increase? It's with the young people. Knowing that there is no cure for HIV and AIDS. That makes us all to be worried. Also facing the new variant that has been discovered in South Africa of COVID-19. Really, really, it's not safe out there. So with those few words, I welcome you in this meeting hoping that we will deliberate and deal with the issue that is before us from the petitioners in a way that will provide them with a positive answer. And they will go out of the meeting having hope in the Parliament of South Africa. Greetings to you all again, and you are all welcome. Ms. Martinez, do we have any apologies? And after the apologies, can you present the agenda? Thank you, Chairperson. Good morning to yourself, honorable members and our colleagues. I would like to um, confirm that there's an apology from the honorable Van Staden. There's another apology from honorable Van Skalvik. She would like to leave the meeting early, I think around 10 o'clock. Um, I'm not sure if honorable Sirisa is online, but I think I may have seen something. Oh, she is online. She is online. All right, Chair, at this point, I'd like to um, put the agenda on the screen. Um, there it is, Chair. We'll get a briefing from uh, Honorable C. Tolo, who is the petitioner. And then uh, the department has confirmed that the provinces will be doing the presentation because uh, this is a matter that belongs to the provinces. Then the committee will thereafter deliberate on the matters raised. Um, after that, Chair, we will um, then consider and adopt the two sets of minutes um, that the committee has um, in, on the table. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ms. Martinez. We then invite, is it Honorable Saitolo or Mr. Saitolo? Sorry, I don't. Sorry, Chair, I've raised my hand. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Prime Mare. Sorry, Chair, I did send you an email last night, but your mailbox is full. Um, Ms. Martinez did, did acknowledge, but I just wanted to advise you that um, I have invited a colleague of ours from Parliament. Um, um, Selefoso um, Bodlani, she's a member of parliament. She hasn't been assigned to a portfolio yet, but I invited her to attend today's meeting. Um, I hope that's okay with you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Prime Mare. We welcome the new member of the parliament. Uh, so she will observe as she has not yet been assigned any portfolio committee she will just observe uh, our proceedings today, but she is welcome. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Martinez, I wanted to check, uh, is it Honorable Saitolo or Mr. Saitolo? So I want to address him correctly. It is Honorable Saitolo, uh, member of the DA. He also serves in the portfolio community on transport chair. Oh, oh okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Honorable Saitolo, over to you. The chairperson of the portfolio committee, honorable members, uh, colleagues, uh, chair, thank you so much and uh, greatly appreciate this opportunity to be speaking to the portfolio committee on public works and uh, infrastructure on issues that are very important as it relates to uh, public works roads uh, in the Northwest province, in particular in the Greater Town local municipality under the Dr. Ruth Sekhumotimumpati district municipality in the Northwest. 
Chairperson, my report that I submitted to the portfolio committee is clearly straightforward in terms of what the issues are in respect of the two petitions that have been submitted to the portfolio committee. However, I just want to indicate and have these remarks uh, before I can uh, indulge onto the presentation. Chairperson, Greater Town Local Municipality is one of the most rural municipalities in the Northwest, as is the Northwest province in itself. Issues of road infrastructure are of critical importance to the people of Greater Taung, specifically roads that are the responsibility of the Provincial Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, uh, and, and roads rather. I have submitted the petitions to the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure nationally because uh, noting that the Department of Public Works and Roads in the Northwest province has been under administration for quite some time now. The petitions that have been submitted have to do with two specific roads, two that the roads that have been marred with controversy, allegations, uh, blame shifting, lack of accountability, and many other issues that we will uh, obviously go through, through uh, when you get to the deliberations. Chairperson, allow me to start off by uh, dealing with the first petition that is that relates to uh, road DT01. Now, as a person who is assigned to the constituency of Greater Taung in the municipality of Greater Taung, of course, it would have been uh, it would have sufficed well um, if we had uh, an, an invite extended to uh, community leaders in these uh, communities that would be able to come and also speak on their behalf in terms of what are the issues uh, that are relating to uh, these two roads. Because in that way, I am not uh, seen to be uh, subjective in my in my in my reporting, and in the questions that uh, we will then uh, deliver to the uh, Department of Public Works and Roads in the Northwest Province. As I've indicated, Honourable Chairperson, the road D two zero one, which is a provincial road uh, cutting across Kapeng um, of Pampirstad, uh, going into Matapaning. Um, in 2000 and, and the 28th of July uh, 2020, that is last year, uh, my colleague, uh, Honorable Advocate Freddy Sonagile, who is the provincial spokesperson on public works and, and roads in the Northwest province, wrote to the MEC uh, for public works and roads, Wahile Saliva Molapisi, seeking clarity on the tender process that was followed. Uh, on the re of road D201 from Pampirstad to Matapaning and Greater Taung. In a tender bid document that we've acquired through the Public Works and Roads uh, website, uh, a document that is dated for December 2019, it indicated companies who had submitted the bid to re road D2, uh, D201. However, the company that was awarded the tender, which is primarily the biggest concern that we have, Outside of the actual regraveling of the road, uh, Lebotevo Trading uh, did not, which did not appear on the um, on the bidding list, but was subsequently awarded the tender. In 2019, the residents of Matapaning uh, embarked on several protest actions demanding the construction of a third road, which was promised to them by the provincial government in 2011. During the oversight to both Matapaning and Pampiristat, community leaders and members had indicated that they were not informed about the re um, and that there was no public participation process in order for them to add their inputs. It was only quite clear that the residents did not approve of the re and that they only wanted a properly tied road that they can use to travel on. There are varying reports as to how much was actually spent on the re including the total uh, number of kilometers of the re road. It is alleged that 40 million was spent on the re the department will obviously further uh, provide us uh, with details in that regard as per their presentation. In a newspaper article published by the Taung Daily News in February 2020, it highlighted how the regraveled D201 road had become inaccessible for the communities using this road. This came after the alleged 40 million regraveled road was washed away by floods caused by torrential rains, uh, which obviously made it uh, impossible uh, for the communities to use the road that was meant uh, to uh, obviously affect their lives positive. However, it ended up affecting their lives negatively in terms of the cost of living, the well-being of the people involved, uh, and life in general. Transportation in rural areas uh, does tend to be expensive, and this is a fact that we all know. Uh, transportation can be unsafe and crowded due to a lack of uh, quality and accessible roads. Chairperson, the tender bid document that I referred to earlier, 
like I said, I want to emphasize this point for the portfolio committee to be able to uh, perhaps also get an answer and a response from the representatives from the province. The tender bid document indicated that the company that was awarded the tender did not appear on the tender bid document and that two, there was no public participation in as far as uh, the regraveling was done. The handover to, of the project was done on the 16th of July, 2020, uh, to which the community and community leaders were surprised. And we would then therefore like to get clarity from the department, the provincial department of public works and roads uh, in as far as the tender bid document is concerned, in as far as public participation is concerned, and in as far as the rationale behind why regraveling specifically when a third road was specifically promised to uh, these communities back in 2011 and probably even before. Um, I want to also indicate, Chairperson, for um, the clarity of the, uh, of the committee that indeed the Department of Transport uh, the secretary also submitted to the portfolio committee the petition on this specific road. And I believe that this is done because the Department of Transport also has uh, the provincial maintenance, uh, the provincial road maintenance grant that it, uh, it's, it gives to uh, provinces. Uh, in as far as memory serves me correct, 20% of that grant can be used uh, to, um, to develop or to construct a road from a, a gravel to tar surface, but I, I would need to look at my, uh, my notes um, in, in respect of that particular percentage. Um, Chairperson, I do not know whether you would want me to continue to the second petition or whether you want me to pack it here um, so that uh, members can be able to also then uh, deliberate on this specific issue. Although the roads are provincial roads, they both have uh, varying circumstances in terms of the responses that are required that will obviously be taken over to the respective villages in, in Greater Taun that are affected or greatly affected by, uh, by this particular issue. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Saitolo. Uh, Ms. Nola, can you then invite the, um, the Northwest Ms. Martinez, okay, I saw someone. I saw someone with uh, with the Northwest name online, so I'm not sure whether they would come in. Um, but we'll we'll get your guidance, Chair, whether Honourable Siyolo can just carry on with the second petition, so that the department can deal with both at the same time. Okay, okay, okay. Honourable Siyolo, let's let's deal with both petitions. Chairperson, thank you very much, and thank you to the committee secretary as well. Um, Chairperson, the, the second petition that has been submitted has to do with road DT06, but I see on the uh, department presentation that the roads have been extended uh, to include others as well uh, within the greater vicinity of the Bahamaidi villages, which is about 12 villages that fall within the Bahamaidi Baka, uh, Baka in greater Taun. But um, I will go through my presentation and my reports to the portfolio committee. And also, when we get to the deliberations, I will then also um, extend some notes and responses that have been submitted by a journalist as it relates to, um, as it relates to this particular uh, halting of the construction of this 10 kilometer road, so that we can then also further get responses from the department in as far as um, the issues are concerned. The construction on the 10 kilometer road that uh, starts from Matseng village uh, all the way passing through Kukumeng to Molelema village. Uh, it was a road that was, up, uh, was supposed to be upgraded from gravel to car surface from Matseng village to Molelema village, which was put on hold by the contractor in November of 2020. The contractor's name there is Investor Construction, which was appointed by the Northwest Public Works and Roads Department to construct a 10 kilometer road linking Masing and Molelema villages. During a community meeting, which we held on uh, June 2021, 20th of June, 2021, with community leaders, there were various allegations that were made in terms of why the construction of this particular road was, was halted. This ranged from the failure of the department to pay the contractor on time, the contractor being paid without any work done, 
and alleged tender fraud in respect of the bid amount uh, for the project. The community had indicated, Chair, that the Northwest Department of Public Works and Roads told them that the project stopped when the contractor requested more money to complete the construction. The department also alleged that the contractor had indicated that he can only complete seven kilometers of the total uh, 10 kilometer uh, road that was uh, budgeted for if he did not get the requested additional amount. However, the community liaison officer or CLO of the project, Mr. Mutibi Mokoro, had indicated that the department had lied uh, in this regard and alleged that the department has missed, had missed two uh, payments to the contractor or payment to the total of 15 million for the three months, which is June, July, and August 2020, which was not paid, and another 4 million for the two months of the work that was done. The CLO further indicated that the total budgeted cost for the project is 65 million or was 65 million, and, it def and therefore it is not practical that the contractor would ask for more money from the department. The CLO further indicated that during the months of non payment to the contractor, he, the contractor, had to do the work and pay salaries from his own pocket. The community indicated the department has refused to hold a meeting with, uh, with them at the department that that is together with the contractor to provide them with the real reasons as to why the construction of the road has been stopped. Chairperson, while I note the, the summary of the petitions because I thought that we would then get to the crux and, and, and the meat of it um, during the deliberations, it is safe to say that no response has been received from the Department of Public Works and Roads in the Northwest Province in this regard in two, the two petitions. And noting also that in the D201 road, the Hawks, uh, was it the SIU, had also launched a probe into uh, investigating uh, what had transpired in respect of the construction of the D201 road. I would therefore submit, uh, Honorable Chairperson, that I leave uh, the issues as they are there and await the communication and then the responses. Uh, as per the presentation that has been supported, uh, that has been presented by the Department of Public Works and Roads in the Northwest Province, so that we can then be able to have an opportunity to ask questions that have not been uh, responded to, whether through a question to the MEC uh, or through the media. Uh, I so move. Uh, thank you very much, Chair Thank you, Honorable Setolo. Do we have the Northwest now? The Northwest Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. Chairperson, good morning. Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Moremi. Good morning, yes. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Yes. Yes. Mr. Moremi, I'm the administrator of the. Honorable department. member of Mr. Mr. Oh, okay, Mr. okay, okay, okay. Can you then respond, uh, please? Thanks, Chairperson. Um, we have submitted a presentation uh, to the committee through the Office of the Minister, which I hope the Secretariat should be able to have uh, might, and might have distributed to the committee members. We had thought that we will take the committee through uh, the presentations that we had prepared such that we are able to give explanations in terms of what was expected uh, from us. Chair, I've given the sharing yes, rights. Yes, please do the, the presentation. We can start with the first presentation, Chairperson. Uh, if the Secretary was able to go onto the screen, I would appreciate that. Uh, to start by saying, I'm not alone, Chairperson. I am together with the officials from the department. I am with uh, Mr. Alfred Mapune, who is the head of roads in the department. And I'm supposed to be joined as well by Mr. Mbulelo Tunzi, who is responsible for the contractor development program. Starting with the first presentation around uh, Road D201. I would like to take the committee through the presentation such that we are then able to share what our views are and what transpired in that regard. Just bear with me and just to get my.
the presentation is going to touch on four or five areas being the purpose uh, of the presentation, which is mainly to provide the portfolio committee with progress report on PWR 91 stroke 13, which is the upgrading of gravel road to surface standard of B201 from Tampin to Matapaneng phase one, which is a 24 kilometer and the processes around the appointment of service provider. On the project background chapters, and what we're saying is that uh, in 2019, the department was approached by representatives of communities from villages in and around Pampirsta to Matlapaning, inquiring about the delay in the construction of road B201 from gravel to surface standard, which is tar. This was followed by several meetings in, in the office of the speaker of Greater Town Local Municipality with all villages affected by the road. A number of meetings were held in this regard, Chairperson, and an agreement was reached that in the interim, the department should consider regraveling the road so that it becomes trafficable while waiting for the department to complete other current commitments in the area. It is important to mention, Chairperson, and also to respond to some of the issues that were raised by the by the honorable member to say that uh, it is true that uh, a project was promised uh, to the communities in the year 2011. But since 2011 to date, the department has not been in a position to have sufficient funds uh, to deal with uh, the road itself so that it can be surfaced to, to ensure that the road is trafficable. Uh, in that regard, with the issue around the regraveling of the road, a procurement process was started and the service provider or a suitable contractor was, 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 was supposed to commence with the works. This was done through, with the use of the departmental framework agreement contracts, wherein contractors that tenders for regraveling and selected were given bills of quantity to complete and, sub, and, and all supply chain processes are followed and a qualifying bidder is awarded a bid. A process was ensued wherein uh, all the service providers that were identified by the honorable member were sent bills of quantity. Unfortunately, from the bidders that were invited from the departmental uh, 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 framework agreement could not uh, submit documents that would make them to be successful for the bid to be awarded. As pressure mounted uh, from the community, the department had to cancel the procurement process that was started, mainly because they could not get someone who would be able to do the project within a reasonable amount that, were, that we had as a budget and be able to ensure that the project is completed. What we then did as a department, we tried to find alternative ways of speeding up uh, the appointment of a contractor so that the, the works can be able to, to, to resume on site. At the time that we were working on this matter, Chairperson, um, the department had what we call a contractor development program that was stopped at a certain point, and we were given instructions uh, by the Office of the Public Protector to ensure that we are able to implement uh, the, 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 the contractor development program with immediate effect. What we did was to look at some of the contractors that we had on our contractor development program, since their appointment did not have to follow a lengthy process that required advertisement and others. And we identified a contractor on that database in the name of Labo Tebo Trading and Projects, who was then appointed uh, as a contractor to implement the project. The project was done in line with what we would call um, treasury regulations that were there at the time, uh, which allowed us to implement a contractor development program without going through the detailed uh, procurement processes. This was done in the main to fast track uh, the appointment of a contractor to move on site. The contractor took site uh, in 2020 and, and the province at that time experienced a, 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 a flood in early, at the end of 2020 and early 2021. And the work that was done on site was flooded by the rains and the communities became dissatisfied with the work that was done on site. 
The department then decided to have discussions with communities and a number of community meetings were held at that time with a view to resolve the problems and get the contractor back on site. The meetings could not yield results as the community continued to raise concerns on the regraveling project and the standard of work on site. The department then took a decision to remove the contractor from site as a result of community protests with a view to explore other options that will permanently salvage the situation. What we did at the beginning of 2021, we approached the provincial treasury with a view to get additional funding to deal with a backlog of projects that were there in the province. It is important that it is not only D201 that had a backlog that dated 2011, but uh, as the intervention team, when we arrived in the province, we found a number of projects that were further delayed by promises that were made which couldn't be delivered on. And what we then did was to request for additional funding to try and get D201 funded such that we are then able to meet the community demands. And the funding was received in the financial year 2021-2022, which is the current financial year. The department proceeded to finalize the designs for the upgrading of the road and advertised a tender to upgrade the road from gravel to surface tunnel. One thing I can report, Chairperson, is that uh, the tender for D201 from start to Tapaneng was advertised and it closed on the 5th of November. And the bid at the time of reporting was anticipated to be awarded by November 2021. I'm, 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 I'm standing here to say that uh, the bid adjudication committee of the department has since finalized the appointment of the contractor. And we should be able to get a contractor on site within a period of 10, 5 to 15 days. Thank you, Chairperson. That is all about D201. If the chairperson allows, I may proceed and present on uh, the other road, which is um, D208. The next presentation, chairperson, is regarding uh, the surfacing of. Uh, D209, D208, D206, and D222, D997, D20, and Z216 from Mulelema to Mateng for approximately 10 kilometers. This is a road that cuts across a number of villages, Chairperson, which um, we will present to you a project summary, project location, scope of works, employment subcontracting challenges and mitigation, and the photos of the project. Project number is called PWR 23914. The client is the Department of Public Works and Afeng Consulting Engineers were the consultants on the project. Bottom Construction JV in Kolele Project was appointed as a contractor to the project. The project is in Dr. Ruth Sukumuse Mumbati District and the contract amount was for 65 million and the total expenditure to date is sitting at 49 and the contract period was for 10 months. The start date was 17 February 2020, and planned com completion date was 25 January 2021. Fiscal pro progress on site is sitting at 58%, and time lapse is 100%, which means that the project was supposed to have been completed by now, and the status of the project is that it has been terminated. We have provided a map that would show where the, 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 the road travels in terms of uh, the areas that it's supposed to be covering and all that. Coming to the project background, Bottom Construction uh, uh, Projects was appointed by the department on 27 September 2019 for the implementation of PWR 239-14, which is an upgrading from gravel to surface standard road to D209, 208, 206, D997, D20, and Z216 from Molelema to Matseng for approximately 10 kilometers. And the project value for this uh, project was 65 million inclusive of VAT. The commencement date on, of the works was 17 February 2020, 
after receipt of work permit, insurance guarantees, program of works, and OHS plan, and other documents that would ensure compliance. The anticipated due date was January 21, as we already indicated, and the, ini the initial stage of the project. The department had written to the contractor both on construction, reminding them about the affirmation to the department to complete the project scope of 10 kilometers within the tendered amount of 65 million and within a period of 10 months. This affirmation assurance came as a result of discussions that would have taken place uh, at, at bidding level between the department and the contractor, wherein we usually would write to a contractor and say, please confirm if you will be able to complete the project within the time frame and within the budget. These are raised mainly because as we see some of the arithmetical errors on the bills of quantities, which would then have indicated to say, please confirm based on this arithmetic error plot that you are seeing on your bills of quantities. The tenderer did, did confirm that they will be able to complete the project on, on time and within the budget. Since the contractor committed to, the, to complete the project despite the error in the bills of quantities, the department implemented the department had an obligation to ensure that the arithmetic errors do not become a risk to the department, but rather remain the risk to the contractor as initially agreed and, and in the commitment that they would have given during the tender period. On the 2nd of June 2020, the department requested a revised bill of quantities with balance rates and a detailed project execution plan that would demonstrate how the aforementioned con contracts will be implemented and how the amount will be utilized to complete the approved scope of work as outlined in the approved contract document. This request was made mainly to manage any potential variation orders that might arise and cover up the errors made during the procurement stage. It, it is therefore regrettable that the contractor did not uh, co cooperate and submit uh, the required documents at the time that they were required. It is therefore regrettable that the contractor refused the instruction of balancing the rates, opting to request for variation again over and above the amounts that were confirmed as, as amounts that will then be able to complete the project. This has caused administrative problems to the project and made it impossible for the, for the department to be able to proceed. Therefore, the department was left with no option, but rather to terminate the project as there were no prospects agree with the contractor and complete the project within budget, scope, and time bound as initially agreed by the parties in the contract. The scope of work for this project is indicated in the, in the, in the presentation, Chairperson, um, and the major activities on the project were the installation of culverts, the roadbed, the lower selected layer, upper selected layer, the sub base base, Prime coating and double seal, handrails, edge beams, road sign markings, and de establishment. The project was supposed to have uh, was supposed to have created 22 jobs. 22, 22 jobs were, 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 were supposed to be created, of which youths, women, and people living with disabilities were supposed to be appointed. 16 youths were appointed, and two women were appointed, and the total labor force. That was the what amounted to about 22. We were also supposed to be subcontracting 10%, an amount of 30% of the project towards a, a, a local subcontractor. The subcontractors were supposed to be doing concrete drains, storm water culverts, road reserve clearance, road marking, plant and equipment hire, and the fencing of the border ship and other activities. What we experienced as challenges there was that uh, the department had a contractor who was not committed to complete the project at the standard amount of 65 million, which is an average competitive rate of 6.5 million per kilometer, but rather requested an unprecedented and irrational adjustment to the contract to the value of about 75%. It is important to mention, Chairperson, that uh, we are not allowed in terms of the contract that we work on to do a variation that is in excess of 20% of the project. So in this instance, the request was at 75, which we found to be unreasonable, irrational, 
and would not be in the interest of the department. More, more, more so that uh, the department would have requested the contractor in the beginning of the project to confirm if they will be able to execute the project without any variations, and they had confirmed to say the contract amount would be able to do so. The contractor failed to adhere to agreements made at tender stage of assuring to complete the project within the approved contract value, time, and scope quality. This occurred despite senior management and political aid interventions, as well as committee stakeholders that had numerous engagements with all parties, striving to ensure success of the project that has been long awaited in the area. The MEC of the department and officials from the department had held a number of stakeholder engagements in the area with a view to try and resolve this problem. The contractor refused to balance the rate and stated that they will only complete seven kilometers of the available approved path. Therefore, the department was left with no option, but rather to terminate the project as there were no prospects to agree with the contractor and complete the project within budget scope time bound as initially agreed by the parties in the contract. As a project way forward, we've said that since the termination of the contract with the contractor was concluded, the department will resume procurement processes that will ensure completion of the project as initially planned. The department will further ensure that the service providers that have arithmetic errors of over 5% of the bills of quantities do not get recommendation for appointment, and for rather the balancing of the rates and errors Corrections shall be done and concluded prior to project award. And the contractor has since referred the matter to arbitration in line with the contract. The department is defending the matter at arbitration and is awaiting the arbitrator's outcome. Those are the pictures of some of the roads that uh, of the road that were that, that was that was under construction. As already indicated in the beginning, Chairperson, uh, the project was at the time of termination sitting at the uh, 58%, and we had spent 49 of the 65 million, and as such, uh, the contract is terminated, and we will have to get a new contractor to be able to come and do this as soon as the arbitration is finalized. Thank you, Chairperson. Those are the representations from the Department of Public Works and Roads in the Northwest, and we hope uh, our representations will be able to shed light with the committee in line with uh, the expectations. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Moremi. Um, any other presentation other than the one from Northwest? Ms. Martinez? No, Chair, those were the only presentations that we received. Thank you. Okay, then let me note, uh, honorable members, uh, for your deliberations on this um, matter. Uh, Honorable Graham Mare, Honorable Suisa, Honorable Higlin, um, Honorable Trink, Honorable Shabalala, uh, Honorable Trink, and Honorable Fans Galvik will leave the meeting at 10. So if you allow me, can I start with them? Honorable Trink, you will be the first one. Honorable Fans Galvik, the second one. Then after it will be Honorable Graham Mare, Honorable Suisa, and Honorable Hicklin. In that order, please. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, I appreciate uh, your indulgence. Um, my, my questions, uh, essentially just two questions, and I think fairly, fairly simplistic. Um, the, our, the presenter on the presentation from the Department of Public Works in the province uh, indicated that there was a problem with the, uh, I think it was the bill of quantities. There's an error in the bill of quantities. When they approached the contractor, the contractor agreed that yes, there was an error and would be able to complete the contract uh, with the amended uh, bill of quantities that would be issued. So my first question is, um, is there any proof in writing or otherwise that the contractor agreed and then later on seemed to have reneged on the agreement? Um, and then my second question is, what is the difference uh, price-wise 
in the amount of finance that um, it would take to either have completed the contract with the contractor that was there, the contention, and the new contract that now has to be taken out to complete the remaining three kilometers of the road. What is the difference? Is it more or is it less? Thank you, Chair. Good morning, Chairperson, Honourable Members. I would like to uh, welcome the presentations that has been made. My questions would be, Chairperson, uh, we we look at the what has been presented, and I I'm just queer, uh, curious. Uh, was the development contractor paid any amounts, and where is the development contractor now? And why do we not hear anything about the project manager and social facilitators in this regard? And where are their reports from the start of the different road construction projects? But also, Chairperson, I'm a, I'm a little bit uh, worried when I look at, at the amounts. Uh, when I look at the, the D206 and, and other uh, roads, uh, the estimated uh, contract amount was more than 65 million rand. And the total expenditure to date is uh, plus minus or oh, more than 49 million rand. But the physical progress to date is 58%. And that's a point of concern. Do you then uh, think that uh, uh, the amount that was uh, in the original contract would be enough to to uh, to finish this project and 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 i i i think that there might be some some challenges in this regard but i i want to hear from them uh, uh, in 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 this regard then a uh, chairperson when looking at at, at uh, if, if the contractor was appointed in December 2019 and the road flooded at the end of 2020 and early 2021, what progress has been made to date on the construction of the road? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just quick, uh, curious in that regard. And when we look at the D201 bid that was awarded in November uh, 2021 and you say, that work will start within the next five to 15 days, taking into consideration that we are in December and usually construction work uh, holds uh, by middle December. Do you think, uh, or do you have uh, special uh, measures in place to ensure that the work will proceed across the holiday season or what is your measures that you've put in place in this regard? I think I'll pause the chair for now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairperson. No, 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 no. Yes. Oh. Thank you. Um, and thank you to to Honourable Setlelo and to the department. I appreciate the presentations. Um, I'll start with, um, first of all, let me just say that I was in Northwest on Monday. The roads are diabolical, and there, there's more pothole than roads outside of Brits. It's, it's insane how bad the roads are there. So um, this department really needs to up its game if it's going to be addressing the needs of the, the communities with respect to, to roads that people can utilize. Um, Chairperson, on, on D201, on the, the response from the department, they said that they needed, that this thing had been outstanding since 2011. But they, so they needed to do something now, and it's, it was kind of going to be a temporary project, and they were doing something on the interim. Um, so I don't understand why this wasn't a fully fledged project that they were investing time, effort, and energy into. And perhaps the issue lies with the fact that they were perceiving this as a temporary interim project and not as a fully fledged road rehabilitation project. So um, I'd like to know why they never actually made this a proper project as opposed to just being temporary. Also, I'm not understanding what the public protector had to do with all of this. Yes, um, the presenter said that the public protector instructed them that they had to use um, a construction company from their contractor development program. 
um, that's fine. But in order in order to to reduce the supply chain management um, processes, and he said it was in line with the Treasury regulations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, I'm not convinced that um, the public protector can issue an instruction for people to deviate from supply chain management um, processes. So I'd like clarity on that, number one. And number two, it's all good and well using um, contractors from your contractor development program. Did they meet the criteria in terms of CIDB um, and were they compliant in all other respects outside of the supply chain management process? Um, then um, they were removed from site. What I'd like to know is how much work did they do? We haven't been provided that information. How much were they paid? Then they, so, so what did that cost? What was the pricing per kilometer on that road that was done? Um, has that deviation been reported to, um, to the province? And then they requested additional funding, which they've now received, and they've appointed a new, a new contractor. Have they now followed the supply chain management processes? And why did this um, second um, application for a contractor result in a tender, whereas the first time round they were unable to find somebody who could who qualified to tender? Then on D206, um, I agree with Con uh, with Honourable van Skalkvik. They spent 49 million rand to achieve 58% of the project. So they spent 75% of the project amount to achieve 58% of the actual outcome of the project. The fact that there was an error in the bill of quantities actually renders this contract fatally flawed from the outset. You cannot sign a contract where you know there's an error, <clears throat> particularly in terms of the cost, and then say, look, don't worry, we can talk about it later. <coughs> we expect you not to now claim the difference because you know this is this is how it works. That contract was fatally flawed and should never have been signed with the error, particularly as we were looking at a 75% difference in terms of what the bill of quantity stipulated to. The, the final pricing on this on this contract was 114 million Rand versus the 65 that they signed on. This contract should never ever have been entered into. And then um, I'd just like to know also um, what what they're doing with respect to recovering the difference. The other thing is, is that the, the presenter said that the initial costing of six and a half, uh, 65 million <clears throat> indicated a costing of six and a half million um, per kilometer for the road. So that, um, and, and said that that was the sort of normal price that they were used to. <clears throat> but based on the adjusted bill of costs, we're looking at 114 million rand. We're looking at 11 million rand per kilometer. What is the department actually paying per kilometer for a contract of this size? Um, and, and would any of these prices, and why would there have been such a massive deviation if the lower amount is actually the norm? So um, I think I'll leave it for there now. Thank you very much. Honourable Suisa. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you for the opportunity. Greetings to everyone. Uh, Chairperson, I'm a bit worried about the presentation that was given out today. Because when you go to Northwest, it's a mess. Their roads are a mess. And I am with the same sent sentiments as my colleagues to say, 75% of money was used, but only 58% of the work was done. Now, the presenter said that a bid was taken out, and then in the bid being taken out, they could see that none of the contractors qualified. Why was there not another bid taken out at the moment, rather than to divvy and do what they did in, in order for them to say, yes, but you want to have a very, a road that's, that's, that's worthy of your car where you are driving when you go to home. And we, we, we all know this, this, the status of Northwest and the advantage that is being taken by people that are staying in the rural areas because of, it's taken that 
some, it, it, why should we upgrade? Why should we rush? And now all of a sudden the whole process has been rushed and everything else. So now the explanation that has been given today, because we do speak with our colleagues in the Northwest, we do go to Northwest to see the status of the roads and nothing has been done. So a contract is taken out in 2019. There are floods in the end of 2020. And you ask yourself, actually what was happening for the floods to be able to damage the road that was done? Was it a temporary road as Honorable Marie is, 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 is stating that? Is it just in the meantime, this is what we are going to do for you. And that meantime means that 65 million is going to be spent instead of doing a concrete road once and for all and close off the project and move to another project. Those are the, those are the conditions that we find ourselves in. Most of us do go to Northwest, whether it's oversight or it's personal, but we are forever in Northwest and we see the status of the roads and the, Department of Public Works and Roads in Northwest is not doing enough for the taxpayers of Northwest to ensure that their money goes where they are. Because now the report that I have from my colleagues from the Northwest is that when we speak about specifically 201, there was a problem with the contractor and the community came on board. The same contractor that the department said they had to deviate and look for someone that will come and do the contract. Because the ones that, that actually applied for the bid did not qualify. This is the same person that there was a problem with the contractor in the report when they went on their oversight last year to say that the report said the contractor, there's a problem with the contractor. We are talking about the contractor that the same department deviated to appoint to go and do the contract of 201. And they had to go back and restart the whole process. So Chaperson, there's not even consequence management that's taking place. We are talking about the bill that had to be amended at the, at the later stage. My understanding is that if a bid is taken out and then advert is put out, the amount is stated there to say, we are giving you, this is the bid, this is the amount. And then later on, you know, you need to go and sit down with the contractor and then they tell you that they cannot do the contract on that amount. Why did they even agree in the first place that they are going to do that? And now we have to sit there. And I'm telling you now, Chair, that this is going to be a mess. In all of those contracts, that there's a lot of roads that are still under constructions that we know of in the Northwest. Even now, those roads are still under construction. And if you can ask for a report as to how far is the process, you'll never get a clear indication as to how far is the process. So it, it clearly shows us today that from the top to the bottom, there's a mess in the Department of Works and going to be held accountable for what we are today. We are going to set and we have to be briefed at a later stage and still people are not going to be held accountable. And something needs to be done, Chair, because this is, this is getting worse. We are in the third year. We are, we are almost halfway into the sixth parliament and we are still with, sitting with a department that's incompetent. From the to, from national, it now goes to provincial. That nothing is happening. There's no consequence. There's a lack of leadership. That's all for now, Chair. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. I'll pick up from here. Um, I uh, first and foremost thank you, um, Honourable Sitlolo, for your presentation and to the. Uh, members of the DPWI from the provinces, I would like to remind you about the best kept secret of the DPWI, and that is a little institution called Agrimar SA. And Agrimar SA is my hobby horse, and it has the most amazing alternative building measures and alternative solutions that one could potentially look at for all measure of um, 
solutions to alternative uh, building processes. Uh, in the Kucha municipality, we have a plastic road that was introduced and is serving the public of Kucha really quite remarkably. And is that not something that needs to be investigated for something just like this? We have a disaster on our hands of epic proportions. Um, can we not look at a solution like that? just to bury in the uh, part of your brain that needs to be able to process something at the end of this meeting. But let's look at the report at hand. We talk about an arithmetic error. Why did it take the department so long to uncover this arithmetic error on D206? What was the arithmetic error? Well, we know what the arithmetic error was. Uh, you cannot calculate a a, a project and then find out three quarters of the way through the project that you can only meet 75% of the project and then throw your hands up in the air when the department has agreed to pay you that money and say, okay, well, we need more money. And if you're not going to pay us, we're not going to complete it. It's very problematic. The department, as Honorable Graham Marie has said, should never have signed off on this uh, on this tender, it was fatally flawed to start off with. And that is the crux of the matter. You cannot sign off on a project that has a fatal flaw in it and then expect the flaw just to disappear. You have to identify the flaw immediately, stop the process before it goes any further, address the flaw, and then proceed to go further. You cannot expect it to disappear or brush it under the carpet and expect it not to go and expect it not to rear its ugly head. The CLO's statement states quite categorically that this program, this, this, this entire process was problematic from the beginning. And yet the department just went on blindly, expecting the problems just to disappear. Um, you say on D201 that you appointed the, the level trading to, to carry on with, the, uh, with the, the regrading of the road in terms of the regulations. What regulations? You don't stipulate what regulations were followed. We don't know what those regulations are. Please, can you make those regulations known to us? Have these contractors been red flagged and stopped from any further work being done? Or are they being stopped from doing any work with the department from here henceforth? That hasn't been made clear at all. Um, and what has been done to reclaim any money? It's all fine and well to say that they have been stopped and you're now going to arbitration. But arbitration doesn't return any money that has uh, been paid out to these uh, contractors for what is in effect faulty work, or if it's not faulty work, who in the department is being held to account? Again, no consequence management. Again, no leadership, either from the minister in the department nationally, or no leadership from the department on a uh, provincial level. We have to get to a point in the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, both from a national level and from a provincial level, where we have decisive management, where we have decisive leadership. We can no longer be led by the nose and be held to account where we, in essence, have to hold the department to account. I leave it there. Thank you so much, Chair. Uh, thank you, honourable members. Um, I can see even honourable uh, Sekolo's hand is up. Uh, yes, chair. Okay, let me let me give you also. Thank you, chair. Thank you very much for indulging me. I do apologise for raising uh, my hand late. Um, the network connectivity in our. Um, oh. Oh, oh, apologies. Uh, Honorable Shabalala's hand was up, but it 
got lost before you, Honorable Setlolo. Let's no give problem, it to sir. Honorable Shabalala. Honorable Shabalala, over to you, Honorable Lizzie. Apologies. Not sure whether is it mine on my side, but I can't hear a word that Honorable uh, Shabalala is saying. Can I, so so low, uh, can I mention the issue of Honorable Shabalala? Can you stand in a place where there is enough um, coverage of uh, network and internet? We can't hear you. I'm coming. I'm I'm back. I was lost. Um, my area is not good. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm saying to the person. Um. Where I'm seated, I have so many questions in my mind. One of which is, uh, uh, Honorable Member Sitolo mentioned the issue of the SIU. And I was just asking myself, which, where is the SIU a process as we are? Is there anything that is in court as we speak? But also to me, it's an issue about the consequence management broadly, even with what we have in the national uh, department. Uh, it, it seems it's, it's, it's lacking everywhere. But my other issue, uh, and I'm sure we may not necessarily have to discuss it in this meeting, where is the uh, portfolio committee, the provincial portfolio committee, on 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 public works in the northern province because I believe that these are our uh, 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 peer uh, in the in the our colleagues in the in the in the oversight uh, side of things. I I don't know whether is there any time where we are going to to engage them or. And what is the recourse? What recourse do we have further from here? Is this a, a, a portfolio commitment? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Shabalala. Over to you, Honorable Seikhalo. Honorable Chairperson, thank you very much. Um, I want to read the snippet from a article on Dawing Daily News. Um, and it also, I suppose it's, 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 it's an old article, but refers to the assessment that was done by the then Premier of the Northwest, Professor Job Mukoro, who had indicated that they will write to the National Department um, in order to make sure that the, uh, the national, provincial and um, internal roads, including those which were affected by the floods in Greater Kawung, um, will be referred to uh, national government as, as uh, to be declared uh, as the uh, uh, state of disaster. Now, I don't know whether that had been done before. Perhaps the department can offer us a, a, um, a response in that regard. And I want to indicate, Chairperson, and ask the question and perhaps emphasizing on what the honorable members have asked. The question that stands out for me that I need to ask is if the nine tender uh, contractors that had submitted uh, the, the bed to re gravel uh, road to D201 uh, from Bambir Start to Matapane had not met the criteria uh, and had not qualified. What qualifies then a contractor that is part of the contractor development program um, in respect of then being, being able to be given the tender? What qualifies them? Uh, it's the question that Honorable uh, uh, Samantha Graham Mare had asked. In terms of what criteria has been followed, or what criteria do they qualify in terms of the CIDB? And also, I want to understand, Chair, from, um, from, from the department. And now, it's easy for me to speak because I am a constituency head of these affected municipalities. I do oversight twice a month in these areas. I am saying again, and the department is welcome to dispute what I'm saying, that prior to the, the re graveling of road DT01, there was no public participation there was no engagement with the community to alert them that indeed we are going to undertake a re -graveling. 
And note also that this was a time in 2019, late 2019, where we had just been going through the phase of COVID when uh, things had started to be COVID-wise and discussions had already started taking place on what needs to be done in terms of mitigating uh, efforts and all of those other things. No public participation was done. Therefore, community leaders and the community at large did not know that there will be re that will be done uh, on that particular road. What they knew needed to be done since 2011 was that there needed to be a tar, a, a tar road that needed to be up upgraded from gravel to tar. That is what they needed, that is what they expected. So the questions stand from the honorable members in terms of how then do you then take a contractor that did not appear on the tender bid document uh, over the nine companies that had sent in the bid, what qualifies them as per the, the, the contractor development program that the, the presenter from the provincial department has indicated. Perhaps a bit of context for us uh, as people who are will be uh, uh, considered as laymen in the subject field um, will be uh, important. I also want to ask the question, how much of the provincial road maintenance grant from the Department of Transport will be used or has been used uh, in the two roads, whether it is the re or whether it is the upgrading of DT06 uh, from gravel to tar suffix. And also we want to know that the, the, the presenter has indicated that phase one of DT01 is now a phase one that will be what that will cover 20 uh, uh, 24 kilometers we want to know that since now the contractor has been uh, uh, identified and has been awarded and all of that who is the contractor how much is going to uh, how much is going to cost the department for the 24 kilometer uh, uh, road upgrade from uh, gravel to uh, tar surface and also um how much is the question that i want how much was exactly spent on the labor table trading contractor who was appointed to regravel uh, the road due to zero one because it is alleged that it was 40 million but those are allegations we are asking now from the department to give us a clear indication of what exactly was the total amount that was given to labor table trading um in terms of that particular regraveling process chair for the consideration and indulgence of the committee I want to read a media report that was released by the, con the said contractor for road D D206, the, the one that was due to be upgraded from gravel to tar, which was apparently halted uh, because of the dispute between the department um, and the contractor. In terms of how much the department owes the contractor, it is indicated that the department had not adjudicated uh, the, the claims uh, to the value of 25 million rands to the contractor. They had been mute and never responded to the plea of the adjudication and the processing of the payment. This matter is part of the issue they have included in their court proceedings. This is the response from the contractor. Prior to this, the department had defaulted in the payments of two invoices. These were submitted invoices of 15 million on 12 July 2020, and it was only paid on the 28th of December 2020. There was another submission of an, uh, on the 24th of August and it was only paid on the 30th of April 2021. All invoices were paid after a very long struggle to the extent of suspending all operations on site. There was no valid reason that was issued by the department explaining the delay in the payments. In terms of what caused the dispute between the two parties, the dispute started around 2 June 2020, where the department realized that they had made a gross error they did not follow correct procedure when awarding the Botong and Kele JDC contractor. In terms of the procurement and the contract requirements, the department was supposed to identify errors in the pricing of the contractor prior to awarding the contract. This now, as we have learned, is called the arithmetic error correction, which they failed um, to follow in terms of this process. The department also failed to carry out the above procedure prior to awarding the contract on 27 September 2019, the site the handover to the contractor was held on the, foot, on the 17th of February 2020, and there is an extract from the letter in, in, in that regard. In respect of uh, the continuation of this particular issue, on the 2nd of June, the department instructed the engineer and the contractor to balance the rates in the price schedule of the quantities. This we heard from the presenter. This contract is a re, is, is a re immeasurable contract. This means that the price of 65 million uh, was awarded does not necessarily entail the final price once the work is completed. Therefore, the amount would vary based on the work done. 
The instruction by the department would now require the contractor to balance the rates. This meant that the department was changing the contract in HM from re-measurable uh, contract to fixed contract. This is the reason that the contractor rejected the instruction and compelled the department to comply with standard conditions of the contract. The awarded contract of the amount of 65 million had two major errors in respect of the arithmetic errors and understated quantities. The contractor and the engineer then corrected the arithmetic errors and quantities. They added other items like CPA and royalties, etc. Then the new contract amount became 114 million. This amount came about merely by correcting the arithmetic errors and quantities which were understated in the schedule of quantities. In the extract that I've indicated, the mentioned amount what, which would be required to complete the original scope was 89.6 million. This amount excluded the CPA and royalties or any other costs which arose from the contract over and above the original scope. The dispute in summary, honorable chairperson, as per the media uh, response that we received, the department failed to take obligation for their errors and tried to shift this huge cost to the contractor. The contractor disputed this act by the department. The project was eventually affected and finally came to a total halt as confirmed by the presenter from the province. Then the department unlawfully terminated the contract. In this regard, an overall charge of the, uh, the question was asked in terms of how much was the overall charge of the construction of the road. The initial appointment was 65 million as we have heard consistently, which contained arithmetic errors and, and the quantities that were understated. The estimated corrected contract amount was for 114 million with the arithmetic errors, quantities, royalties, Europeans, et cetera, costs, uh, which were added. All the costs form part of the obligation of the department. Now, the department has alleged that the contractor requested an increment uh, after they undercharged and was asked how true this is. And according to the contractor, this is totally incorrect. The department failed to comply with contractual obligations and tried to shift the cost to the contractor. This has been already explained above as per my description. How does the non-payment of the, the department to the contractor affect the, 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 the contractor financially? As I've indicated that the contractor had to continue with some of the work without having been paid by, without having been paid by the department. The worst part was that the department was mute for a period of over 10 months. Contractually, they were unable to close site. They had to keep on paying cost of personnel, plants, and keeping the site alive. These costs have not been recovered by the contractor. And the company has already suffered a great loss and struggled financially up to this day. The other critical matter is that there are particular individuals in the department who are responsible for this mess of this project and have not, been, have not made an effort to turn, have now made an effort to tarnish the image of the company in an effort to, shave, uh, to shift the blame and cover their own uh, dodgy acts. Chairperson, I hope that that particular smaller summary brings about a balance in terms of the presentation that was done by the department, as well as the presentation that, I, that I've now delivered based on the media uh, query that the contractor has responded to. Uh, thank you, Honorable Sixolo. Um, just a few words before the, the, the department uh, responds. Um, one thing is that your presentation raises more questions, um, as Honorable um, um, Shabalala has indicated and other honorable members. It leaves a lot of questions hanging. It, in fact, it, the issue of SIU is the first thing that comes to mind. But um, the issue of uh, development contractors is not a wrong issue. We would like to ensure that we have each department develop uh, people on the ground. But once you talk about development contractor, it means you need to play a serious oversight because you have uh, said this is a development contractor. But from what you have presented to us, uh, Mr. Moremi, 
did you get any project reports from the project manager uh, from that uh, project that was happening there? That is the, the regular reports. Did you get any reports from the social facilitator to hear what the community is saying? And, and now, Honorable Sikolo is coming with another angle, which indicates that the community was not consulted. And then you ask yourself, what is the role of the social facilitator uh, uh, in this one? Because Honorable Sikolo is coming with another angle now, which even the questions that I've written, they're no longer relevant uh, from what he has just presented now from the media clips and, and, and from what has been happening in Northwest. But uh, I just want to check, has there been any payment made? Uh, yes, Honorable Sikolo is coming with something that uh, you had to be taken to courts to do a payment. Can you explain further, Mr. Moreni, now basing on what uh, Honorable Sekolo has just presented to us, even on the media reports that are out there and on the information that maybe you failed to report to us and, and respond to all the comments and questions that have been raised by Honorable Members, thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, thanks for the questions and comments that were raised. Uh, we will try and respond to all of them. Uh, they all came uh, in, a, in a long um, line of questions. Um, if we miss some, you'll pardon us, but uh, please remind us where we missed some of the questions. Let me start by giving uh, just a, a historical perspective that would assist uh, the committee to understand where the nature of the problem is and to address issues around the bad condition of roads in the Northwest and all that. The Northwest Provincial Government had challenges in the maintenance of its roads and the upgrading of roads from gravel to standards dating years back. If we look at the case around D201, and a number of cases that we're dealing with, they date back over 10 years, I think. There were challenges that were made mainly through political processes, wherein uh, politicians will visit communities and make pronouncements on roads and promise to say it would be done in the coming financial year or in the next year or whatsoever. When such roads couldn't be done, mainly due to unavailability of funding, one. Two, being that either the designs for such roads were not there and all those problems. When the intervention team went into the Northwest in 2018, July, August, we found that there were about 19 roads that were supposed to have been done and were not done and communities were promised roads. And as such, what we did was then to try and have a number of consultative sessions with a number of communities to resolve such problems. There were uprisings in almost all communities at the time. And based on the uprisings, the departmental officials together with uh, the MEC would then have visited such communities, met with the local municipalities with a view to try and resolve such challenges. I can say that to date, we have been able to resolve almost 80 to 90% of all the roads that were promised and not delivered at that time. Moving forward is to come to D201 specifically and the issues around um, stakeholder engagements and uh, social facilitation. Our report comes out clearly in terms of processes that would have been followed in terms of D201 and the facilitation that was done thereof. We have held a number of meetings between the Office of the Speaker in Greater Taung and the communities that are affected by D201. 
all we were pleading with them for was to say the department does not have sufficient funding to be able to put tar road on D201 from Papirsa to Matlapata. And what we came up with as a temporary measure to ensure that the road can be used by communities and communities are able to access traffic control was to then do regraveling and regraveling of the road in spots that were very bad and changing of culverts and bridges in areas where we thought we would be able to salvage the situation in the interim whilst trying to come up with solutions that would be long term. The advertisement or the, 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 the invitation of contractors uh, from the departmental database to assist in terms of regraveling of the road was done. It is true. A number of contractors were invited, it is true. And we could not find a suitable contractor that would be able to do it within the estimated budget that we had at the time. And as such, we felt going again into an open tender would delay the project further, but would also keep the communities hamstrung in a road that couldn't be utilized at the time. What we then did was to look at an alternative quicker way of doing it. And we went into our contractor development database, wherein we found contractors that were meeting the minimum requirements of the CIDD, which would then be a contractor that we would have appointed, which is Lebotebo, amongst the others that were there, to then say they will go and attend to the regraveling of the road on D201. The contractor has been working with an engineer at all given time. The contractor has been working on the project and trying to implement what we expected and thought that would be a regraveling project. Due to inclement weather and the challenges of the weather that happened towards the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021, the road that was regraveled got carried away by the wind, by the, by, 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 by the floods. And we had an obligation to get the contractor back on site to be able to do the work again. The estimate that we had on the, on the project, at the time of the flooding, the contractor was already at about 80 to 90% of the project and was supposed to be completed. Now we had to get the contractor back on site after the flood to make sure that uh, whatever portions of the road have been flooded can be fixed. A number of interaction sessions happened between the department, the communities, and the local municipality with a view to ensure that the road remains trafficable whilst the contractor is on site. There were a number of protests and protests in the area which made it impossible for the contractor to even remedy or do the work in a manner that will be able to say that the work has been done fully. The contractor with the amount that he was appointed for of 21 million at the time did work up to a point wherein all invoices that were submitted were sitting at 18 million rands. And to date, he has not been able to conclude the work, mainly because the, the communities on site were threatening to destroy his equipment and other things, and the interactions that would have taken place and all that. So coming to the issue of the contractor development and the issue around the public when the intervention team arrived in the Northwest in 2018, we found that the Department of Public Works and Roads in the Northwest had a contractor development program that was started in 2012 and was terminated midstream due to unavailability of land. All the contractors that were in the development program went to the public protector to raise a complaint. The public protector listened to their complaint and ruled that uh, all the contractors who were on the contractor development program should be reinstated and the contractor development program should be resuscitated. Based on the remedial actions of the public protector, the department's administrator and the office of the public protector and the office of the minister signed a settlement agreement that will then say the department will conclude the contractor development program 
and ensure that all the contractors that own the contractor development program are reinstated and we are able to give them an, an opportunity to implement projects that are in the department. This, as we were implementing it, came handy to then say, based on the model of implementation of the contractor development program, we are not expected to be advertising tenders such that they be. What we do is to pick contractors that will be on that database and be able to utilize them towards doing work for as long as they meet the minimum requirements, which are your CIDB uh, 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 gradings and others. But over and above, as and when we appoint contractors on the, on the contractor development program, we appoint them on a deviation that gets reported to Treasury such that the whole group of contractors are then recognized as part of the development program and would have deviated mainly because there would have been a deliberate intention to upgrade and develop them and monitor the work that they do on a continuous basis until a time that we are able to release them and get them out. Um, the SIU investigations, the SIU investigations are being done and they are being done on specific roads in the, pro in the province. There are a number of roads that were identified for, for, for investigation by the SIU. This was as part of the intervention in the Northwest as a way of trying to deal with the challenges that would have been experienced in the Northwest as it relates to matters of road. The investigation is ongoing. It started in May this year, and we're anticipating a report of the SIU at the end of January 2022. And we're hoping that uh, as soon as the report is released, it will be made public for even members of the portfolio committee to be able to look at what has been found and what is being done. It, it is because of this very same intervention that we would have then requested for such to be done. Issues around recovery of funds and consequence management is that as the SIU is investigating in areas where there will be recovery of funds, such uh, recommendations will be made. In areas where consequence management has to be taken, such will be made as well. And the department will be forced to implement all the recommendations that have been placed by uh, the different uh, departments. Coming to the issue around Botong construction and the construction of a D206, 208, two and the others. I'm going to touch on some of the areas, but I'll, I'll get my colleagues uh, to give you more detail around this matter. To say that uh, in the beginning, even before awarding of contracts, the department had written to the contractors to request them to confirm the amount that they will be able to implement the project within cost, time, budget that has been allocated and all. And the amount that was agreed upon at appointment was an amount of $65 million. This was done mainly to avoid the kind of problem that has arisen now. Usually what we have as a challenge is that um, we would have contractors who would bid, and contractors after bidding, they would submit their bids and we would then consider in terms of the triple PFA, a bid that would be the highest scoring bidder. And the highest scoring bidder in this instance would be someone with the lowest price. And we had foreseen a risk that was there, but which was moderate at the time of award. And no wonder we would have gone and said, please confirm your price, and please confirm that uh, you will be able to do this at, at the price that has been given. Such letters would have been written and would have received responses from the contractor that, yes, I will be able to do the work at the price given and everything. In each and every construction project, it's important to mention that yes, construction projects do have variation. Yes, construction projects do have a allowable limit of adjusting bills of quantities and all those kinds of things. But the bills of quantities that are allowable in terms of being adjusted per price, in terms of the regulations that we have and the contracts that we sign, which we call the GCT, we are not allowed to exceed a 20% of the contract value has a variation amount that may be considered by the department. If such an instance arises, 
it then means that we will need a treasury that will then authorize and approve such. Having taken precautionary steps in the beginning and having received uh, the amounts that were given by the contractor at the time when we wanted them to balance out the bills of quantity, we realized that we will not be able to do this within cost time and uh, 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 all the requirements that we have, but as well within the allowable limit of 20% variation. What the contractor was requesting was then a 75%, which would then increase the contract value from 65 to 140. If we, you are to be dealing with a public fund, you wouldn't dare going near an increase of a contract by 75% in an instance that uh, one would have confirmed that I am able to do this contract within the cost budget and the amount that was provided. So we would have tried to stay within those limits to ensure that uh, we are able to do this. The issues around alternative technology raised by Honorable Eakling, we note them. Uh, we will take uh, those into consideration as we move forward. Um, the matters around whether the bid that we have awarded to are awarding now, it's a, 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 a red followed a procurement processes on B201, yes, we have followed procurement processes. We may not be able to announce the name now because we haven't as yet uh, notified the contractor and other contractors that we have bidded on the project. So as soon as that is made public, the information will be provided to the committee. Um, I will also ask my colleagues to talk to matters relating to the 58% work vis-a-vis -vis the 49 million that has been paid. They will also talk to the invoices that were paid to the contractor Bodong on D2062082. Um, they will also talk to matters relating to the PRMG and how it gets used, how much we receive from national transport and how much was used of the PRMG on D201 and how much was used on the PRMG on D206208. And um, we'll also touch much more on the <clears throat> uh, project that relates to Molelema to, 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 to that, uh, and they'll give more detail in terms of the numbers and all those other kinds of things. If Chairperson allows, I'll request the Ndadema Pune to come in and um, address some of these issues. Ndadema Pune, over to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moremi. Thanks, Chairperson, and thanks, honorable members. I'm not so sure whether I'm audible. I'm using a phone. My gadget is not, it's not, it's not, it's not doing justice to me. Chairperson, you I'm, are am I audible? audible? You are audible, Mr. Mafuna. Thanks, Chairperson. Chairperson, let me just deal with the, the latest one uh, with regard to the use of the provincial road maintenance grant. Uh, D201 is, is, is a road that categorized as upgrading from gravel to, to tar or to, to tar surfaces. Um, the condition does not allow us to do that. The PRMG condition does not allow us to spend the grant on the upgrading from gravel to tar. So the, do, the road D206, uh, there was no grant that was spent on that project. Uh, the D201, which is a boundary study to uh, Matlapane, uh, I think Mr. Moremi touched on it. Uh, the contract, uh, the contract, the contractor was awarded at two twenty one point three six seven million uh, for about twenty six point eight kilometers, and the only expenditure that we incurred is eighteen point six million, as opposed to what the media has reported that the tender was awarded at forty million. So we only spent eighteen million on that one. Uh, the, the, the other issue that maybe I should clarify, Chairperson, is the issue of whether the community of Matapaneng and the, and the other villages were aware of the regraveling project that was done by Lebutev. Uh, the correct version is that the, the community around that area had approached the department complaining about the road condition. And a number of meetings were held with the communities at the municipality where the department was 
uh, explaining the challenges that the department is faced with in terms of funding and starting with the project. And as, 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 as it was, there was a, a time where the community of Matlapeng had to stop kids from going to school because they wanted the road to be tired. And then we went back and had a meeting with them uh, where we pleaded with them to say, uh, if we can, in the, in the interim, be allowed to regravel the road and make it traffic, trafficable while trying to get funding to do the road uh, in the years to come, we will do that, which they agree. And uh, the processes that were followed up until the contractor was appointed, the community was aware of. The only community that did not uh, want gravity, even when we, we approached them, was the community of Mutuedi. They did not accept gravity, graveling even after we had a discussion with them. So, so, so the, the, the correct version is that, yes, communities were aware of the regraveling project that was, was done by the Wittew in that particular area. Uh, I thought I should just correct that version. Uh, the, the issue of D201, uh, 206, uh, the, the, the project is it's, it's a very long road with many roads from, uh, from Mante to many villages around the area. But due to limited funding that we can spend on the upgrading from gravel to tar, which is our equitable share funding that we get from the province, and after the pressure that we received from the community after uh, facilities were banned in Mulelema. Uh, there was a commitment that was made that uh, we will only do 10 kilometers as phase one of the project. And that phase one will start from Mulelema towards Matei. So the 10 kilometers is between Mulelema and Matei. Uh, now, when the contractor was appointed, uh, there was a question that was asked whether there was an agreement in writing in terms of whether they would be able to finish the project within the cost, quality, and time. Yes. On the 27th of September 2019, the department wrote a letter to the contract so that the contractor can go back to their bid, to their bid document and confirm that the tender that they've submitted with that amount, they will be able to complete the project. Uh, the contractor respond on the same day, 27 September 2019, which clearly shows that the contractor was ready to do the work and verify all the facts uh, in the documents. And, and that's how the tender was awarded to them. Uh, the issue of, of arithmetic mayor error is very technical. And, 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 and contractors, some contractors uh, uh, do it deliberately. What we picked up in the bid is that they were less by 24 million, which would have made the bid 89 million. Hence, we wrote to them to confirm that this is the amount that they quoted for them to be able to do the work at 65 million. Like Mr. Moreme said, uh, Chepe said, we're dealing with public pays. Uh, we, we, our interest is not on the, on the business made by the, done by the contractor, it's on the interest of the community. Now, if they responded and they responded to say, no, we made an error, we wouldn't be able to do that work at that amount, amount of money, as others would do. The department will have appointed another contractor uh, above them. Which contractor will have done the work and, and, and finished the work at that particular amount of money? Mr. Moremi also indicated that uh, a bid will be awarded to the IS scoring bidder, which automatically becomes the lowest. Hence, we, as the lowest, we had to approach them to confirm the, the amount of money that they have tendered for, whether they will finish or not, which they did. And, and, and it comes to 6.5 million a kilometer if you are to aggregate it. Now, they then came back to us, wrote us a letter to say, they will not be able to finish the project as 10 kilometers, as originally agreed. They will be able to do seven kilometers and not three kilometers at that, at that amount of money. Which we said, no, we have an agreement with you. 
So we cannot relegate that agreement halfway. Then they say they want an additional of 49 million, which will then take the contract amount to 140. By the way, Chairperson, we don't have a second contract. We don't have a contract for 40, 114 million. Uh, we had some honorable members say we have second contract, uh, which is 114 million. We don't have that contract. We have a contract with them, which is 65 million. So we said no. We, 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 there's no way in which we'll get there. Uh, that would have mean that the three kilometers on the same stretch of road will be done at 16.7 million a kilometer. Where the seven kilometers will be done at 6.5 a kilometer. It doesn't make business sense. There's no logic in that. Then we said we can't do that. That's where, that's where the problem started. I will not deal with the issue of media because media, uh, Chairperson, uh, I'm challenged there because I, I really don't uh, want to get involved in the media stories and stuff like that. Uh, I think it's important that I give you facts, not uh, allegations. Uh, so the contract started to cause problems and not want to work, uh, but we want to be paid money. So we have an engine on site. The issue of payments, when people say a contractor is not paid by the department, we only pay the contractor when the contractor has submitted a certificate that has been certified by the engineer on site. Not a certificate that the contractor has made and has kept it because it is not with the department. Only when the, the, the department receives an invoice certified by the engineer and we're happy about it, that's when payment is effected. So, Chairperson, that is the reason why we, 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 we can't continue with the, the contractor uh, because the contractor uh, is not able to do or execute our contract that we have with him. But at the same time, the contractor abandoned the site. Uh, last year, September, and we gave the contractor enough chance up until June to go back to site. And it, the contract did not go to site, so we had to terminate the contract. We don't owe any cent to the contractor, as we speak, Chairperson. Uh, if, if I miss something, Chairperson, uh, you will you'll, you'll remind me, but I think I was trying to cover, to cover everything that I've had. Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you, Mr. Mafuna. I don't know whether, um, Mr. Moromo, you had another person who was going to assist you in responding other than Mr. Mafuna? I do not see the person in the meeting, Chairperson. But oh, uh, okay. Tunzi is okay. here. Are you there, Mr. Tunzi? I'm here, sir. Okay, then Mr. Tunzi, the floor is yours. Um, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you, Remo Remy. Honorable Chairperson, I would want to expand on a few things. The first one is the procurement of contractors under contractor development that I would like to give more details on. And I wish to state the following, that in 2013-14 financial year, the department undertook a public procurement process wherein it invited contractors in the Northwest to express an interest to be enrolled under the contractor development. And the bid was advertised in regional newspapers. In the Northwest, we've got four regions. And compulsory briefing sessions were held in each region. Over 200 contractors applied. These contractors, upon having applied, were subjected to the following processes. Pre-screening, where we check for proof of metric, valid CIDB, valid co company registration. They were subjected to psychometric and psychological assessment as subjected to interviews, written assessments, financial and security screening, as well as all oral interviews. 
which we looked into issues about their understanding of the construction industry, tendering, and other things. Out of over 200 applicants, we arrived at the appointment of 64 contractors. To cut a long story short, Honorable Chairperson, the contractor under discussion, Lebun Debu, at a time of applying, they were a CIDP level three. Today, they are at level seven CE, which means they have actually benefited from the development. When they were appointed for this road, they were level seven CE over the years that they have been part of the program. And the total of the project that they were appointed for was 21 million. The key takeaway would be that Lebundebu is one of the two contractors at level six, seven from that region. So it made practical sense for the department to consider them to do the work in their own region uh, there. Now, just to expand, Mr. Moram, if I'm giving too much detail, you'll guide me. The issue of the deviation, uh, it's really a clearly stipulated mandate that covers not only Northwest, all contractors under this program follow. It's a uh, treasury regulation, uh, which is 16A 6.4, that allows the accounting officer to undertake these kinds of uh, uh, deviations. At the point where Lebuntebu uh, was working, the project really, as part of the development, it was in the form of a 10 key, where consultants and subconsultants were appointed by the contractor themselves as part of their development. But on top of that, we still had another company that was appointed to assist the department with issues of quality assurance. It's worth indicating that when Lebuntebu left site in December of uh, last year, the works were sitting at 90%, and the area experienced abnormal rains, and these rains then destroyed the work not because there was poor quality of work by Lebuntebu. It was because the engineering design of the, of the gravel road was not elevated to be above the waterline that the abnormal rains provided. Uh, the one more thing I would like to talk to Honorable Chairperson is that in the, when this happened, when the community could not travel in the road, their reaction was to stop Lebuntebu and thereby impounded the contractor's plant. The contractor's plant, when it was impounded by the community, forced the department to be in a position where it defaulted, it had to pay the contractor for standing time. It is worth reporting that out of the 21 million that Lebuntep was appointed for, an amount of 3.3 million was paid for standing time while the works were taking the project expenditure to 93 million, while the actual work was standing at about 90% of the value of the project. Lastly, honorable chairperson, which means the actual amount expended by the department for the actual work that was done was 16,500,000, which is 77% of the appointed amount. If you add the 3 million, which was mainly due to the community having impounded the, 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 the plant of Lebuntebu and that three million, it takes the expenditure to 93 million of the appointed amount. 
when Treasury made the budget available for the upgrade of the road, the department then took a decision to say Lebundebu must then cease operations at, plan at, at site. The new contractor will then come in as long as the road is trafficable. Now, the sub-consultants under Lebundebu we're talking about, we're talking your OHS, we're talking your social facilitation. My principals have expanded in detail about all social facilitation interventions that we have undertaken. It's worth noting that when the community were, was affected by abnormal ruins and could not travel on the road, they seem to be, for, uh, to be insisting that uh, we must go back to the original plan, which was upgrading of the road from surface to upgrade, which at the point when we came with the intervening plan of, up, uh, of, of uh, covering the road, we did not have budget for. That is actually, Chairperson, the main bone of contention here. That is my submission at this point in time. Remo, Remo, I hand back to, over to you, sir. Thanks, Chairperson. That will be all from us. If there are questions that we missed, um, we will revert back to those. But if there's also additional information that is required by the committee in terms of letters and other reports, we, may, we are in a position to provide such. Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you, Mr. Moremi and your team. Uh, I can see that the uh, hands that are coming maybe follow up on the presentation that you have done in trying to respond to all the questions and comments that have been made. Uh, Honorable Sewesa, Honorable Graham Mare. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Chairperson, I've been listening to the, to the responses that are being given here. And, um, and I'm a bit worried, one, uh, the presenter says that the meeting was called at the municipal offices. That's not public participation. That's calling a delegation to come and speak on behalf of the community. And I ask myself, how were those people handpicked? Because it simply means, it says to me, people that could have made very valued input in those meetings were left out. And I ask myself, was this done deliberately? It's not a public participation. It's a meeting of delegations. If you say that there was a meeting, then it means that there was a delegation that came in to come and speak about, do we need a tar road or do we need a gravel road? So that's not public participation. That's my first one. My second one goes to the optional deviation, deviation that the presenter is talking about that it's there, it's from treasury and whatever, whatever, and the, the clause that he has mentioned. Now, you, you talk about deviation. The first time you deviated because of all the people that put in a bid did not qualify or did not meet the criteria. And then you decided to deviate. And then on the second option, then people are complaining and then the contract, the, 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 the contract was terminated. And then you decide to go back and do a bid. And I ask myself, what informed you in the first place to go and deviate and not a bid a tender for the same road? And then the third one, which is my concern is that the presenter says that 90% of the work was done and then the rains came because of the, the road was washed away because it was not accommodative of the water levels. And I asked myself, was it the first time that there were ever rains in this area? And it simply tells me that the contractor himself, whoever he is, the contractor that was responsible, did, did he even do a survey and ask themselves to say, if I do this road, what are, the, what are the impacts at the later level? Is this road going to sustain for the coming five or 10 years? Or does it mean that at the later stage I have to come back? Because if we talk that the, the road was not accommodative of the water levels, and I ask myself, was it the first time that there were ever rains in this area? 
why was not proper work done? And why was there no proper public participation where people need to come in? Because you speak about the road that comes from Pampirstad. And we know that Pampirstad falls under the Northern Cape, which means it's Pokwani municipality. We talk about communities that most of them are unemployed. Did they get money? Was the transport provided for them to go to Daung and attend these meetings? Because we talk about money. Instead of the department spending money to go to the people and call a meeting of all community members that stay in there. Now we are talking about the meeting that was in a boardroom that was very comfortable where tea and cakes were eaten. And then a certain delegation comes and speak on behalf of the community. I'm not surprised that at a later stage, the community decided that we are going to stop this project because we are not satisfied about what is being done for us, whether we are taxpayers or not, our kids are taxpayers wherever that they are working in South Africa. And now we are, we are being told that the meeting was called in the municipal offices, which means that, that was, there was no public participation. So I need to get the clarity. Was it the delegation that was told to come to the meeting? And then why deviate? And then the second time you decide to bid. And then was there a proper background that was done about the area and what are the water levels if the, if the road is going to be sustainable? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, and Chair. Honourable um, Shiklin, after Honourable Graham Thanks, Chair. And um, yeah, I agree. I agree with the points raised by Honourable Suisa. Um, those are certainly concerns that I have. Um, just on the D two hundred one, um, I just wanted to find out whether or not there was value for money. Um, they paid eighteen million rand. Did they derive eighteen million rand's worth of value? Um, how much of the work already done? must be redone and what is the new tender amount they've spoken about a new tender but they haven't given us what the new tender amount is so how much of how much is it going to cost now to complete the work that was already started um in the past i just want to come back to the um the contractor development program the contractor development program in the northwest was fraught with all sorts of of problems and part of the reason why it was um stopped was because of um, mismanagement of the program, the um, bringing in EPWP people, misallocation of funds. So the whole program was stopped midway as a result of poor management of the program by the Northwest government. The public protector, as you've said, then um, directed that they must conclude the, the program and reinstate those people and use them. Now the public, the, the, the contractor development program um, allows for contractors that have a CIDB grading grading between one and five. What I'd like to know is at what point did you reinstate the um, participants in this program? Um, how long did it take for them to then be um, upskilled from a grade five? Because you said at the start they were a grade three when they joined the program. What was the intervening period? And how long did it take them to then attain grade seven status, which, as you said, was what was required for a 21 million rand contract? And, and did, they, did they actually attain that in time? And then also you said that in terms of the de deviation, you, you created a deviation that covered the entire contractor's development program. Um, maybe I misunderstood and maybe that wasn't what you said. So in terms of that, how many other contractors from that program have qualified, have completed the program, and have been used by the Department of Public Works in in the northern um, in the northwest um, since the conclusion of the program. And did did you properly conclude that program in order to upskill them correctly? Um, and then just finally, I find it interesting that you were awarded a tender to a company that had seriously miscalculated by your own admission by 24 million, which we subsequently found out was a lot more than that, but you appointed them because they responded to you on the same day and seemed ready to go. Um, I'm sorry, I found that, that a very interesting basis on which to award a, 
65 will ultimately 114 million rand tender. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Chair. I'll pick up from there. Um, Honourable Graham Marais picked up my first question, which was, how did they get from being a level three, five to being a level seven contractor? And what kind of upskilling did it take um, for the contractor to become uh, eligible for this particular contract. And the second question that I'd like to ask in terms, um, which is a follow up from Honourable Suisse's comment was, was a proper EIA done? Was an environmental impact assessment done if the road was completely washed away by the rains? to what extent was an environmental impact study done, um, that their work was below the water level that would enable their efforts to have been so completely washed away by rains that had obviously taken everybody so by surprise, uh, that whatever they had done in the time frame between the start of the project to the time that they were taken off the project that that the road is now in the state that it's in thank you so much i'll leave it there chair thank you um honorable members on on this follow-up questions um can you respond uh, mr moremi and and your team so that we can round up and, and then tell you what are we recommending, what must be done. Thanks, Chairperson. Uh, <clears throat> I've got just uh, two, three things to touch on. Um, say, the deviations that we do on uh, the contractor development program are for projects that we would then appoint them on an annual basis. Uh, it's part of the development that we'll then do because we cannot get them to compete with other uh, normal contractors under the circumstances. Uh, it would then be a deviation that covers all contractors that we would then put on the program. Secondly, is that uh, we allocate work to contractors uh, on the basis of availability of work and other things. Contractors develop over a period of time. Uh, they would move from level three, four, five, six, and seven. I might not be able to give you the progression of the company specifically now to then say over what period and how many projects they've done. But um, it's, a, it's a gradual progression from three to a certain level, and then they exit. Um, was it the first time that we experienced rain in the area? No. Um, I need to emphasize that uh, these were floods. Um, the honorable members, you understand that uh, the rains that we had uh, end 2020, beginning 2021, were part of the El Nino rains that were flooding. Uh, there were more ash uh, in the Dr. RSM area and uh, all gravel roads, even if tar even tarred roads that were there, they were flooded as a result of such floods. And uh, we would say that um, it wasn't just ordinarily this road that had been flooded, but also the main road that cuts through uh, Dr. RSM, like the N14, the N12, and the N18, they were also flooded uh, to a point that uh, it is not an issue of the quality of the road, but it is the issue of the harshness of the floods that we had experienced at that time. Um, whether there was value for money, yes, we would say value for money was received. And as well, it is important to mention that uh, it was not the entire road that was flooded. It was portions of the road, which were mainly in mountainous areas, which were flooded and uh, could not be utilized at the time. Um, the issues around how much is it going to cost now, I need to also mention that uh, the project we were doing at the time on D201 was a regraveling. That is the blading and putting gravel in areas where there will be need for doing so and ensuring that uh, the road is practicable. What we are working towards now is the tarring of the road 
which is the entire road uh, from beginning to end, which amount um, is still in the competitive bidding process and the contractor hasn't been notified uh, of such an amount and we will be able to provide such an appointment letter or information regarding the amounts as soon as the project is formally finalized. Um, I think uh, I have touched on almost all the areas that were raised, but the issues around um, uh, 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 whether there was public participation or not, whether there was a, 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 an impact assessment, environmental impact assessment done, and all those things, I'll leave that to Ndade Mafune to touch on, and then uh, we close. Ndade Mafune, if you're still there, uh, about the engineering studies done on the project. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Mr. Muremi. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson and uh, Honourable Members. Uh, Honourable Members uh, and Chairperson, well, uh, like what Mr. Muremi is saying, uh, the work that we're doing with Lebu Table was maintenance in nature. Uh, we are maintaining an existing gravel road. But the call by the community was, we don't want gravel in this area, we want tar road. So after having, after having deliberation with the community, we made undertaking that the, the tar road is going to be done. We are going to appoint a contract this financial year 2020. But between then and now, the road must be trafficable. Now, we were not going to incur a lot of cost, uh, like removing the culverts that are there, which are small, and replace them with bigger culverts, which are going to be redone by a bigger contractor, which is coming to do tar road. So it was just an interim measure to say, let's make the road trafficable as routine maintenance. Uh, when a tender is awarded, to tie the road, then proper structures will be constructed in terms of the designs. Yes, the EIA was done when the road was designed uh, some years back in 2013, and uh, it was found that that area from Tlapay, Mutwedi, Mukasa, Lishowo, Mukhari, Matlapaneng, Tumase, it's a low lying area. When it rains, they are floods. So our plan that we are going to implement now, we take care of those floods. Uh, in in area like Mutwedi, when it rains, people can't even get out of the house because there's all water all over. There's no flow of water. So that has been taken care of in our design that we are going to implement uh, from the contractor that Mr. Muremi said is going to be appointed now. Uh, I, I need also to correct that he didn't say a contractor will be, the work will start this year. He said a contractor will be appointed between now and the 15th of December. So obviously the work will start next year. So, so the EIA was done broadly for the whole area and for the whole road. We were not going to do another EIA uh, just to do the graveling because we're going to incur cost for maintenance and put structures that will be removed when a bigger contractor comes to, to do uh, the tarring of the road. Uh, I think I should just indicate that. Uh, also to add the issue of uh, participation, uh, uh, honorable member, we, we, are, we are dealing with a very, a very, a very difficult community there. The, the reason why we had meetings at the municipalities and allow community to go and report back to their, to their members was that uh, in 2017, and not only once, we had a meeting in Mutwedi where we called the community and uh, our staff and engineer were, uh, were held hostage and we had to call police to rescue them. When people are going there to give them good news to say, the road will be, is coming in this year. So, so, so we, we, we were not going to risk lives of people and go to participation in volatile areas like that. So we said communities must go back to their community and report. And, uh, and that is how we did it uh, 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 when, we, when, when, when we brought in the gravel. Uh, I thought I should just clarify that, honorable members, so that we, we, don't, miss, uh, uh, we don't miss a point that was raised. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Noting that we won't have another uh, speaker on, on this issue. <clears throat> Mr. Moremi, is uh, anyone coming in? Before I, I, I summarize and, and round off this debate, 
No, Chairperson, I think uh, we have covered area. Okay. Uh, thank you uh, again, honorable members, for probing these difficult questions to the Department uh, of Public Works and Infrastructure in Northwest. And we really appreciate um, that Honorable Sikthola brought this uh, uh, to us as the Portfolio Committee of Public Works and Infrastructure nationally, not only to the department, but as I indicated earlier, this leaves a lot to be desired. You have so many questions, uh, in fact, that have not been responded to, but we can deal with this only today as you also have the program of our portfolio committee to, to deal with. So I, I then uh, suggest that, for example, you did not respond to the question of the social facilitator. Why do you employ a social facilitator when you are going to say the, the community is difficult? What is the work of the social facilitator? Did the social facilitator report to you uh, that she or he experienced challenges when dealing with that community? But again, that, that is not for, for us. But uh, uh, recommendations that I'm suggesting uh, on your behalf, uh, honorable members, is that this be taken to the Portfolio Committee of Public Works and Infrastructure in the province uh, to deal with this matter too. But also the issue of the Public Accounts Committee, uh, SCOPA in the province needs to deal with this. Uh, as, 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 as we all were listening, there are serious issues that need to be probed further because it deals with public pass. And again, we are going to recommend that the NCOP select committee also deals with this uh, matter of these roads in, in, in Northwest. As, as it was indicated earlier on, that public works and infrastructure is under the administration. That is why we're dealing with it at this level uh, and I believe that uh, Honorable Sexual Sexuality, yeah, uh, much as we can't give you uh, definite answers, but at least this is a this is a start uh, in probing what happened to the funds that were uh, um, given to the contractors, whereas nothing has been done or it has not been done well. I don't want to lie to you. It is the first time that I'm hearing of an arithmetic error. Uh, we, we come up with so many words when we try to hide things. As you all know that this committee is open to all South Africans to hear this. It means that as the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, you have a big role to play. It can't be as if you deal with this, you just move on to something else. Whereas public has, has been, uh, public purse has been spent and nothing has been delivered. It is very wrong for politicians. Uh, I agree with you on that one, Mr. Moremi. I don't know whether it was you or Mr. Tunes or Mr. Mafuna, that politicians would go to communities promise something that is not budgeted. That one is wrong. But as the administration, you need to inform your political heads that what you are proposing there is not budgeted so, so that you go to that community and tell them this road will only be done in 2021, 2022, not in 2019, 2020. So that people of South Africa have at least a respect and hope in the government of the day. So with those few words, um, Department of um, Public Works and Infrastructure, we will follow this, though we won't be actively involved as we are saying that the portfolio committee in the province, the SCOPA in the province must come in and also on our side, the NSOP must come in, select committee must come in 
on this as public works and interest and infrastructure in the northwest province is under administration so thank you again for your presentations and thank you uh, honorable security for bringing this to our, ten our attention and all the south africans out there so that they know that whenever something is not done that was promised to be done by the government there are many avenues to report that there are many avenues to call upon departments to account publicly on what has been done. Thank you again, Mr. Moremi and your team in trying to explain uh, what uh, uh, Honorable Security uh, brought in his petition. Thank you again. We will now release you as we are to deal with the matters that affect the committee. Thank you again. Thanks a lot, Chairperson. Thank you. Ms. Martini said our, our, oh, oh no, I, I, I apologize. I, I, I wanted to say thank you. Uh, and that perhaps I should uh, make a plea to the committee that next time when there are petitions of this nature, and I'm sure there will be quite a number of petitions of this nature, <laughs> just that I'll be submitting one again, that I, I beg the indulgence of the committee chair. You know, sometimes if I'm doing the presentation, it almost often makes it difficult because I omit the subjectivity where, wherein we can hear both sides of the story, both from the community and both from uh, the department, so that there is that uh, uh, consistency. And that perhaps the chair may reconsider that once I've submitted maybe another petition to invite uh, uh, community stakeholders to also come and then deliberate on, on, on their own frustrations, on their own issues, and even perhaps give an opportunity to the portfolio committee to visit uh, these areas that are in question. Uh, I, I hope I'm not pushing my luck, Chair. Uh, thank you very much for the indulgence and the opportunity, and a blessed day to all the colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Security. No, we will be doing uh, oversight visits to some of the projects of the public works and infrastructure, but you are assisting us. So, at, uh, where to look at when we do this oversight visit? Uh, we, we will then discuss with the committee whether to invite. Uh, uh, community members because we you are a public representative you are representing that community when you come to us with your petition so you must also note that but thank you again for bringing for bringing this to our attention thank you uh, miss martinez uh, can we then get uh, the next item on the agenda i understand it is the minutes of the previous meetings and the one that we asked uh, that they be deferred for e refinement. Yes, thank you very much, Chairperson, again um, to yourself. The minutes that are currently on screen are the minutes that were deferred by the committee last week uh, due to just a, a minor error, which we went back to the recordings and discovered that. If I into a chair. No, no, I that it was actually on I don't know. Honorable Mjobo, as supported by Honorable Fans Gagvik. I don't know whether it's because I'm I'm hotspotting from my mobile phone, so there might be something that's disturbing. Oh, person, okay. Am I on? okay. You you are now, but we lost you somewhere. Okay, I was just uh, saying person. I was just saying, Chair, these minutes were technically um, considered already, and that's why we had to go back and have a look at the, at, at, at number 5.2, which we have now confirmed that it was Honorable Mchobo, seconded by Honorable Fanskalbeck, um, that moved for the adoption of the minutes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Ms. Martinez. Uh, um, honorable <coughs> members, these are the minutes that we, we asked them to be deferred. Uh, for some corrections um can we get then a mover for the adoption of these minutes and the second i'll move chair honorable members i don't see any hand yes honorable I'll hickley move. honorable hickley moves for the adoption of the minutes can i get a seconder please i honorable second 
thank you honorable members can we get then the minutes of uh the previous meeting nola i believe we also have them yes thank you chair the minutes that are currently on screen are the minutes of the meeting that was held last week which was the 24th of november where we were supposed to have the responses by the um legal branches of the department the osla and and parliament so in the main chairperson the the resolution was that uh, um the the legal practitioner should go back and then um the presentations will be deferred to the first quarter of 2022 thank you chair um um thank you miss martinez um if if i may, if i may come in on the resolution oh let me note the members first yeah honorable Kramare and honorable hicklin um chair i was going to move for the adoption so if you want to make amendments or anything then i will i will reserve my my moving until you are done okay okay thank you thank you thank you honorable Kramare. on on the issue of the resolution uh miss martinez um, the committee resolved that the presentation be deferred to the first quarter of 2022 because the legal service provider of the minister and the department was not fully prepared and there was no document. It was not only that, yes, I agree with you, but even the legal services of the parliament, they were not ready. They were not ready, the legal services of the parliament uh, on, 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 that, on, that part, on that particular day. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. I, I think now it's fine. Honorable Prime Mare. Yeah, on the basis I've got of one that, error. That, um, I, I have one error further. Okay, up Honorable chair. Chicklin, then. Yes. Just on the first page, no. The if you move up just a little bit, Nola, the first page. The there you go just go down a bit no, sorry nola it, it's actually highlighted on your um there you go there you go the this the, okay there you go thank you so much chair and then uh, honorable graham maria will uh nominate i will second <laughs> okay, Honorable Graham Murray moves for the adoption of the minutes with the corrections, and Honorable Hicklin uh, seconds that move. Uh, any announcement, uh, Ms. Martinez? Ms. Martinez? Uh, yes, uh, Chair. Yes. Um, any an announcement? Sorry, Chair, yeah, before we have an announcement, could I just ask? Oh, okay. Ask an announcement clarity. from Honorable Graham Murray. Sorry, no, it's not an announcement. Chair, I just wanted to know, we haven't um, discussed any potential recommendations um, following today's meeting. So I just wanted to know um, what, we, what we're going to resolve on as a committee, or will that be presented in the minutes and we discuss them when we do the minutes in the next meeting? Um, because I do feel things like um, they, they undertook to come back to us with um, the name of the company that had been war awarded the tender. They undertook to come back to us with um, details with respect to the amount of the tender. I do believe that we need to take some resolutions as a committee with respect to what we heard today. This department were extremely cagey about what is going on there. There are major problems. And I promise you, I was in the Northwest this week public works that entire department is under administration and i do believe that there is a lot going on in that department so that falls then under our responsibility because they are under administration from the national department so i do believe we need to start putting pressure on that department to come clean on what is going on there because if they're spending money on roads i'm not sure where they're spending that money because their roads are diabolical so i would like to know what resolutions we are going to take as a as a, um, a portfolio committee and then just one other thing that i would like to just draw everybody's attention to i'm not sure if you saw the news this week there are major major issues around the jersey barrier wall 
including the fact that the project's been hijacked by the construction mafia and that there are allegations of major fraud and corruption um, in that project. So um, I just think that we need to we need to look at that uh, maybe for the early part of next year in um, having another review of what's going on in terms of the Jersey Barrier Wall and what our responsibility has been in regard to that project. Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you, uh, Honorable Primary, Honorable Franz Calvi. Thank you, Chairperson. Honorable uh, Franz Calvi, your hand is up. Yes, Chair. Thank you very much. Chairperson, mine is on a slightly different uh, issue. Um, we, I apologize this morning uh, for not being able to do for being able to leave the meeting at 10 o'clock because of the AGM of PARMED. Uh, we know that all of our members are PARMED members and there's really a lot of issues that needs to be dealt with. And now the meeting di didn't go right at half past 10 and it's rescheduled for next week, same time for 10 to 12. The deputy speaker was in the meeting, is the chair of the meeting. And he indicated I, when I request that the meeting time should be changed. He indicated that it's not possible to be done that way. So I would like us to, to, to uh, find a way to reschedule maybe our meeting to, to move it maybe earlier so that uh, some of our members are able to attend that important annual general meeting of parliament, of parliament. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Franz Kalvik. Um, I think we're noting that. Honorable Hicklin. Um, yes, Chair, and, uh, again. Uh, um, followed by Honorable Lizzie Shabalala. Your hand is also up. Yes, 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 Honorable Hicklin. Um, another one just to bring up, uh, if we're bringing up issues that I think we need to keep an eye on, and that is that the CVE seems to be falling apart, Chair. Uh, we are we having councillors resigning left, right and centre from the CBE. The CBE is not curating. They were supposed to have had a meeting on the 25th of November. The meeting had to be cancelled because it was not curating and it has now had to be deferred. And I don't know whether the meeting of the CBE is going to curate uh, when it tries to meet before the end of this year. And that is something else that we need to keep an eye on because that is the overarching body of the built environment professionals. And that is something that we have to keep an eye on as well. These are just things we need to make sure we don't let slip through our fingers because that is our job in terms of oversight. Just a little tidbit from me as well. Um, do we have a meeting next week? I don't have anything on my calendar, which means, Sharon, that we should all be able to make the PARMED meeting. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Hicklin. Honorable Shabalala. Thank you, Chair. Um, mine is on the resolutions. I had you hinting on the uh, role of the NCOP. I wonder if we can uh, 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 agree on that as part of the resolution. But I would also uh, maybe if we can make a follow up on the SIU, if we were to be able to get the SIU or AG on this part to brief us so that we we are able to to balance the 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 views and the findings around the roads maybe in totality the the roads in the in the northwest and the how for instance how would the department arrived at being a, under the administration because for the first time I'm hearing it, uh, and if it not come around with the issue of the roads, maybe one would not even have uh, to hear about it. Uh, uh, that's all. But also, if if I may, what happens in the space of the 
the, the department being the under administration. I still feel that if, if the, our colleagues in the, in the province as part of the portfolio committee, we may have to, 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 to deal with them or engage them at some point. Thank you. Uh, thank you, honorable members. Uh, honorable Franz Kalbeck, is this a new hand or a legacy hand? No, Chair, it's a new hand. I just want to withdraw on, my on, statement. On, on, on the, all the matter being discussed. Yes. yes? So, so okay. in, in okay. that regard, I, I would just uh, alert the chairperson and members, therefore, that this is officially our last meeting for the year. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Honorable members, if uh, thank you, Honorable Franz Kalvik, and, and thank you, Ms. Martinese, for, for correcting that, that this is our last meeting. So I'm also uh, uh, and echoing what Honorable Franz Kalvik said, that all of us uh, as members of parliament should join the, the AGM of permit next week, which starts at 10 to 12. Uh, Honorable Franz Kalvik, if you will share the link with us, we will definitely join in numbers. That is the first one. The, the second one, um, Honorable Members, it's, it's the issue of, of, of uh, the, what the JZ barrier walls in, um, in, in KZN. We'll ask uh, our team to check that and we'll follow that one or up because we went there to do oversight visit. So we, we can't leave it hanging if there are things that are coming on. Um, in Northwest Honorable Members, there are departments that are under administration. And as such, if a department or a municipality is under administration, remember the NCOP has a role to play. That's why we are saying that the NCOP select committee should get reports on this and should follow it up. And again, honorable members, the issue that has been presented to us, it is about roads. Yes, this department is public works and roads in Northwest, but roads here in parliament, they fall under the department of transport. That is why you are saying that this must also go back because at some point we'll find out that we are discussing something that is not in our terrain. Yes, the department has to answer in us, but what do you do where a department has functions of another department in terms of the national uh, discord? Remember here we have roads and transport as a standalone department. In Northwest, you don't have that. You have public works and roads and dealing with roads. But we'll check that and deal with it uh, because this is our last uh, portfolio committee this year. We, will, uh, we won't uh, stop and say that we are on holiday. We'll investigate all these other issues that are coming up. So actually when we come in back next year, we are ready for all, for all these uh, issues. We can't let this uh, die down, um, Honorable Graham Mare. The fact that it has been brought to our attention, it means that we also need to constantly get some reports and report to the public and to the Honorable Members of what is happening now in Northwest. We'll check that. We'll check it through the Select Committee. We'll also check through with, the, with, that, with that department. But on the issue that we invite the, the, commu the community as Honorable Secretary was, was, uh, was proposing, I, I think, uh, Honorable Members, we can't do that. Honorable Security on his own is a public representative, is representing that constituent, and he indicated to us why he brought this. It's because it is in his constituent. So we can then uh, not believe what he is saying and say we must listen. What you must do, you must bring all the information to us as he did so this time because he came up on second round and explained further some of the issues that the department was trying to deviate from and trying to hide. We all can see that there is something wrong there. I think we all, all of us, uh, all those that raised questions, they, their explanation as the department left much to be desired. It left us with so many questions. 
that remained unanswered. That's why we, SCOPA has to come in. SCOPA has to come in on, 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 on that one. Um, Honorable members, again, it, it has been a, a, a busy year, an eventful year with COVID-19, trying to live with COVID-19, with vaccination, hoping that all of us has done so. And then lastly, the variant that has come in South Africa. We're living in fear and that, that is the truth. We don't know what is going to happen tomorrow because of all these things that are happening, but also the pandemic that is HIV and AIDS, which is increasing in the number of infections. We can't run away from that. And with many people defaulting on the treatment uh, as it has been indicated so by the researchers, it's, it's really sad. And uh, another pandemic that is um, engulfing our country, the pandemic of gender-based violence and femicide. Women and children are killed day in and day out in South Africa. It is no longer safe to live in South Africa. It's worse when you are a woman uh, living in this country. You can be killed by your intimate partner. You can be killed by a stranger. You can be killed by anyone. You can be raped, you can be beaten. That's the unfortunate situation that we're facing as women who are living in this country. But we believe that um, we will overcome this at some point in the future. Uh, but with those few words, honorable members, thank you again for participating and for contributing in this portfolio committee positively and for ensuring that the, um, the public hearings that we had to do, the work that we had to do for the expropriation bill number 23 of 2020, we did that united and we had a great team that supported us in those public hearings. That is why we had such a, a wonderful um, report, a report that is very clear, a report that they consolidated. Uh, so our word of gratitude and thanks goes to our team, uh, the, the committee secretary, uh, Ms. Martinez, um, our researcher, uh, Ms. Ines, and our content advisor, Mr. Shoaib, you are always playing a great supporting role to this committee. So continue doing so even in 2022. We wish all the members of this committee a happy and merry Christmas and a prosperous new year. I believe 2022 will also be a great year. Please take note, COVID-19 is still out there with the new variant that is, so we must please keep safe, observe all the health protocols, ensure that you are not in a space where it is congested. I know with the Christmas season, malls are always full wherever you go you will see many people please try not to take out your mask observe all the health protocols be safe honorable members be safe our team we would like to see you next year take care happy christmas enjoy yourselves we meet in the plenary at three Today, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Have a great break. Take care. Thank you for a wonderful year. Chairperson, just as a just as a side note, um, Honourable Graham Murray asked about the recommendation yes. on, on the petition. So I just want to I just want to confirm that as part of the process of processing a petition, we are required to produce a report that the committee will then consider and adopt during the first term of 2022. Thank you, Chair.
Announcement. Recording stop. Announcement to Ines. Um, no, um, I, 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 I saw that we are having a, um, Nola indicated there's a final meeting on Friday. It's not our committee, but I assumed that it was a suggestion that the committee join that meeting, um, on, uh, with, uh, defense. Apologies, Jefferson. <laughs> Which one? The, the one year of the defense? Yes, Chairperson. <laughs> no, it's not our committee. It's not even a joint. But if we join there, we will be listening, not participating Thank because it's not our committee. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.